Howdy, howdy, and welcome back to Games Questers. We are finally recovered from UK Board Games Expo. I hope you've been enjoying some of the features so far. Yep. So, we are in our new studio. It's lovely, it's great, if a little bare. We've got some new features in this episode. For example, I've been sitting and talking with Grubbling Games, going over some of their games and some awesome dice that they're making. And from this week onwards, because we now have the studio, we're going to be going through some games. So this week it's Top Top Woodsman, also known as Click Clack Lumberjack when it was originally released. But first, uh, I spent some time with the amazing Lobster Boy from Hawk War Games. Well, actually, he spent a week on a glacier with no sunscreen. So don't adjust your screen, he is just that sunburn. Hi there, I'm UK Games Expo, Hi. and I'm here with Dave from Hawk War Games. Hello, mate. Right. So, um, what do Hawk do? Uh, we make a Drop Zone Commander, yep. 10 mil scale sci fi mass battle war game. Cool, cool. Um, it's a tournament system, so it's designed to be evenly balanced. Okay. In the game, you've got your drop ships dropping off tanks and things in cities, you can blow up buildings. It's very cinematic kind of game. Oh, okay, so it's yes. not like I move my men five degrees and then check their morale against the weather table. Yeah, yeah, it's okay, not that so sort of thing. Okay, so we're not getting advanced squadron leader. Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's fairly fast play. You know, the typical tournament game is maybe an hour and a half That's size game. That's not bad, game. actually. That's for a full, like, 1,500 pointer. Which so is, yeah, yeah. what would most people start with? Like? Uh, you sort of five, 600 point starter sets. Okay, cool. So there's actually, like, complete starter sets. Yeah, yeah, there's a starter set army box, which is just, like, everything you need to get into the game. Cool. There's the two player that has two of those in, and the rule book and the scenery yeah, yeah. and everything. And we also do separate single player ones if you oh, okay. if you know what army you want to play in. That is a nice touch. You know, it's good if your mate's got the two player, you can get something else yeah, yeah. and you can get into it easily so, that I mean, way. How long has Hawk been about and doing this? Uh, I've been doing this for just over five years, but okay. Hawk's been around for two and a half yeah. as a company because I worked on my own for two and a half years. In, okay, so in you did, my, like, you yeah, did yeah. Drop Zone and then became a big boy and did Hawk? No, no, I would, I, this was always the plan was to release Drop Zone and the company at the same oh, time. But okay, I see. I, it was just me working on all the design and the writing oh, and stuff. Oh, fair enough. You know, for a couple of years to get yeah. everything ready for launch. So, like, your miniatures, they have a really nice combined aesthetic. Uh, quite hard sci-fi. Yeah, yeah, it's very it's modern sci-fi is yeah. how I describe it. Contemporary okay. sci-fi so, with a sort of art deco leaning in a few yeah, places. Yeah, you've, you've got a nice art deco to So yeah. was that a conscious decision or was it just yeah. you had saw some cool stuff and thought... A conscious ah. decision. Oh, OK, well... Yeah, well, I, I like art deco anyway and it's... Oh, okay. It's part of the fluff. Is they, there's a bit of a kind of rena architectural renaissance that goes back to what would we you must like? must murder each other. Let's make it beautiful. Oh, I mean, it's, it's most of the planets are human worlds, and yeah. generally there were ex kind of front like primary planets that had a lot of money spent on them, and they oh, were okay. beautiful planets that then got taken over by the badass aliens scourge, oh, okay. and then the humans are coming back 200 years later to try and recapture those worlds back from. The badass aliens. Yeah. So humanity's actually on the offensive for a change. Oh, okay. Rather than this, yeah. an unstoppable alien threat yeah. kind of but thing. But all these planets are a lot more decadent and shiny than the ones that they have to live on at the moment, which are the oh. colonies, which are rough and tough kind of places to oh, live. Oh, okay. So they're they're trying to recapture their best planets from the aliens. That's, oh, okay. That's, that's the core of the background. A, that's quite a neat twist on the background. So, um, I mean, one of the things I've commonly seen is your miniatures, like your dropships, your things actually fit in the dropships, don't they? Yeah, yeah, everything is true scale. So, yeah. you know, all the tanks, yeah, they fit in. And yeah, because you've got that cool scorpion tank that magnets onto the thing, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. I know I'm just butchering the alternative, <laughs> or, you know. No, people magnetise a lot of stuff yeah. with Drop Zone. You get a lot of people doing, you know, articulated turrets and all that. You can go as far as you like, or you can just glue your models together and play games you know you don't cool. have to do all of that stuff for gameplay it's just if you want to do it or not cool so what's your like community aspect of it you know do you because i mean i've seen people about uh, uk games Expo with some beautiful yeah. stuff i mean is this something you really heartily encourage kind of tell oh, yeah, us yeah yeah we, we've got the hawk talent scheme which is our volunteer scheme for oh, people okay. who want to get people into the game the forum's really active uh, we run tournaments at least twice a year ourselves but more and more gaming groups are up and running with the tournament scene now which cool, is really good cool. So, um, yeah, great. Uh, two quick questions. One, is there anything cool on the horizon? Uh, well, there's Drop Fleet, uh, which, which is our space combat game. Which, uh, well, that is, that's uh, the drop zone. Yeah, this book. is a 10 mil scale strike carrier behind me here, three yeah. meters long. Uh, this is in 10 mil scale, which is drop zones yeah. scale. And then that will be what, like? About this big. This is a frigate sized ship, so okay, it's quite so small. It's not even a big boy ship. Yeah, yeah, this is a little ship. They're okay. one of the smaller ships in the game. And then the battleship is like that, to okay, nice. put okay. it into comparison. That will be out um, early next year, is the plan. Cool. We're cool. not going to release it till it's ready. Good man. But good that's man. an orbital combat game. So yeah. you're actually playing over a planet's surface rather oh, than in space. Oh, rather than space. it being just in. Yeah, because oh, you, you know, your normal spaceship game is a black table with yeah. star fields and 
it's not like that. It's you know you have orbital layers and you have stuff That's that can go cool. atmospheric and you're dropping troops in cities and orbital bombarding well, cities and stuff. So I have really no doubt thing. that we'll want to talk to you about that at a later date. But uh, where can people find you on the internet? Uh, just www.hawkwargames.com. Okay. Um, or just Google Drop Zone Commander or Hulk and you'll find us that way very oh, easily. Wonderful. Well, thank you, mate. Yeah. I hope to awesome. see you soon. Thank you very much. Cheers. Hello, Games Questers. We are going to be playing Angry Jenga or Tok Tok Woodsman or Click Clack Lumberjack. Basically, rules of the game very simple. You have an axe and you have to hit twice in a turn anywhere that isn't the base. And this counts. That does count. Uh, in which case, my turn. Uh, when you hit it, if you knock off one of the edge pieces, it's worth one point. If you knock off the middle, it's worth minus five. Yep, don't worry, we're doing that. Yeah, player with the most points at the end wins. So, um, I'll go. I hate this game, by the way. One, two. Oh, I'm going to fail so much. Oh. One, two. Are you trying to knock out the whole... Yep. Well, why? Two points, because you have terrible hand-eye coordination. Oh, I hate you. Yep. Do you know who hates you? Toby. Toby mm. loves Gav. My dog. My dog has decided to own Gav instead of... Yeah, Gav Arkrendor has uh, taken ownership of uh, Nikki's dog. Mammal. Yeah, her tiny mammal. Are you trying to sabotage the whole thing? Yeah. But why? Winners don't do drugs, but they do mess with others. Oh, I hate you so much. Yeah. I got one! Yay! Okay. Oh, you do. Oh, it's wobbling. I don't yeah. like it. Get wobbling. Yeah, 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 yeah. Oh! No! <laughs> Why? Oh, this sucks. What? Just, just not do it. You ain't got a Don't run. No. No, run. That's two points. And we'll get our magical studio trolls to. Uh... Ah! Two points. Why? Are you trying to give me a heart attack? <laughs> Pretty much. Come on, come on. Oh, oh. I done chickened out, yo. Oh. Instability sucks. <laughs> uh, I win handily with five points. So that's Top Top Woodsman, Click Clack Lumberjack. That's Nikki being terrible at games. Oh, do boo, do do boo, do do boo. And uh, we'll see you next time for the next game. I'll win one day. Bye bye. Hi guys, I'm here with Henry at Grubbly Games. Uh, so I just wanted to find out first of all, where did you guys come from? Okay, so uh, we're from Cornwall, right down the bottom of the UK, um, and um, we wanted to make games which. Um, are really, really as thematic as they possibly can be. Okay. So uh, we don't want to do abstract things. We want to do things where the the game and how you play it fits with the theme and the illustration. Um, so you're really kind of having a game full of flavour and character. Mm. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a couple of your games and they're really pretty. The stuff that you've got here, it seems really well detailed and really well done. Thank I mean, you. Is there, is there any particular game that you've got at the moment that seems to be doing really well? Yeah, well, that would be Wackle Dance. <laughs> um, so Wackle Dance is a game which we launched at Essen uh, last year. Um, and we completely sold out of this um, wow. uh, some time ago, but we kept some stock back for the UK Games Expo, and it's been flying. So we're up for best family Quite game. Literally. Yeah, because it's about bees. Yeah. Just so, in case um, you didn't know. <laughs> so yeah, so um, that's been uh, really well reviewed. So from Dice Tower, from Rado, from um, a whole load of people, and we really wanted to make a game which was as accessible as it could be. So kind of the perfect gateway game. So. Michael Dance is um, explained through pictures, run through words, yeah. and um, it's yeah about bees. It's, re <laughs> it's about me. It's really well done. I mean, it's quite it's quite eye catching, and I feel like a family could get together and really get the teeth into it and really do well in it. Yeah. So I mean, most of our sales are to families. So because it kind of works so well from uh, the kind of uh, from younger players as well as older players playing together, as well as with experienced board gamers and inexperienced board gamers. So, but don't think it's a light game. And the reason why we're getting such good reviews is because it's got so much depth. 
Um, so I like to think of it kind of like as the Simpsons of board games, if that makes sense. Yeah, that so does, it kind of it appeals to all these audiences at once. All the audiences at once, and you know it's just one of those things that you can fall back to, and you know it'll be a good laugh and a yeah, good Yeah, I think so. I mean, based on what you've got here, is there anything that we can look forward to from you guys? Have you got anything in the pipelines lined up for us? Yeah, um, one second. What is this? We've got some very nice dice. Oh my lord! <laughs> this is amazing, look guys. It's incredible dice. I don't even know. So these are these are Terralith dice. Terralith uh, so dice. So they're on Kickstarter at the moment until, um, I'm not sure when you go live, until the 3rd of June. And, um, yeah, probably would have gone live by then. Yeah, that's cool. And uh, we really wanted to make dice that um, weren't based on with dice you have kind of they're all platonic solids yes so cubes or pyramids or dodecahedrons and we really really attractive as thank well thank you yeah really well done we, we really felt that um, we wanted to do something more with dice so it's not for a game we just wanted to make nice dice <laughs> <laughs> well there's no, no one needs an excuse to make nice dice I mean there are that in itself that is incredible I'm just I'm impressed that you've been able to do so much to be honest, it's really impressive that you've got such a repertoire and you're spreading it out really yeah. well. So we've been really lucky with our games, um, with Corner Smuggler and with Michael Lutz especially, um, which means that we kind of have a lot of freedom, of choice of what we want to do. So if we so with Waggle Dance, we have uh, 79 custom dice with Waggle Dance. 79, wow. I yep. enjoyed the perversity of making a game with so many dice. Um, but um, with that, um, I, uh, want, I didn't really know how to make dice, so I wanted to find a a technical manager, if that makes sense. Yeah, that does make um, if you If you want to get into it, you need to make sure you're doing it right. Yeah, so we weren't making, just to check, we weren't making any mistakes in production and so on. And um, that was uh, with a company uh, called Iron Drake over in Italy. Um, and uh, that was a really good experience for both of us. And that turned into conversations of, yeah. well, what can we do with dice? And um, this is where Terralith came from. And these are metal as well. They I'm, are I'm metal. Not, I've not yet come across a metal dice, but I'm. Well, you can get metal dice on uh, Shapeways, for instance, uh, which oh, are yeah, kind of yeah. beautifully designed also, but they're so expensive. Yeah. Um, so for a set of D&D uh, &D RPG dice, uh, we're looking somewhere between 70 and 90 pounds. These are on Kickstarter for 27 pounds. That is, that is really impressive. I mean, I, I, I highly back these guys. I mean, you're doing great here. I hope you're enjoying the event. I mean, I, love it. I can tell that you guys have been really good, successful, and I really hope that you have a lot of we see more of you in the future, but it was really nice to meet you hey, and uh, have, you a, so have a good rest of the event, okay? One more, thank you. So the Grub and Glaives were great and they've given us a set of their D the set of their dice to give away. Here's the D20. It's pretty, it's heavy, it's metal, and you probably shouldn't be using it as a weapon. You probably could though. <laughs> I'll give away details of how you can win these at the end of the episode. Yep, so it's our monthly shilling period. And so Mr. Games Quest has asked me to go through the new releases from the last month and highlight the ones that I think are worth your time and attention. So uh, we've got Super Cup, the Camel Cup expansion, Artisans of Nakwala, the Five Tribes expansion, which actually brings Five Tribes up to Five Tribes, <laughs> um, the Forbidden Stars, which is the new 40k, 1.40,000, for those of you who don't know, strategy board game, ships, battles, stuff, figures, fancy flight, all good. Um, the Star Wars Force and Destiny beginner game, which introduces Jedi and Force sensitive users into the Fantasy Flight Star Wars RPG system. Boss Monster 2, which is an entirely standalone game and is compatible with the previous Boss Monster, so a double whammy there. Uh, the third edition of The Resistance, so not only has every tabletop show ever covered it, but you can also get it with fancy new art and it's a reissue, we've been having trouble getting hold of it since it hasn't been thing. The Grumpy Cat Dice Bag. It's Grumpy Cat in the dice bag! Uh, <coughs> the Little Prince game, which will allow you... To, it's a wonderful little game, you can play it with your kids. Beautiful, beautiful little game. Uh, Marrying Mr. Darcy, it's a Pride and Prejudice period piece of cunning and swooning. Oh. Um, <laughs> Spyfall, which is the board game of the app, which will end friendships. One of you is a spy and is trying to blag to the others that he was actually there and go undetected. Uh, the Love Live DX boosters for Weishvots, because Nikki here is a massive weeaboo. Uh, oh, and don't forget as well, Ninja Division has finally released their expansion, what was it called? Uh, Karate, Karate Fight. Karate Fight. Yeah, which you would have seen in a previous episode. No problem. And as well as that, guys, as always, we always put out a competition at the end of this. So remember, if you want to be in with a chance of winning the full set of um, those metal dice, how many are in there? There's a D20, a D12, a D10, a D percentile, a D8, 3d6 and an octahedral d4. Octahedral, oh, very fancy. Oh, and as well as that, you've also got Cornish Smuggler, the game. We've yep, got it up there. there. 
So if you actually want to win those, how do you win them? Uh, you need to comment below or comment on our Facebook page. Uh, we will be doing the draw on the 17th of July, 2015. Um, and yeah, we'll let you know if you win. And don't forget guys, if you want to actually subscribe to us, like, follow and subscribe to us on Twitter, Facebook and on YouTube. And you'll be able to see details of our new episodes as well as that. That's how we announce our winners. Yeah. So, so if you don't, you won't know. <laughs> yeah. So thank you as always to Hawk War Games, to Grubbling Games, to UK Board Games Expo, and to Games Quest for putting up with us and supporting us this week. And yeah, I think that's it. See you next time, guys. Be seeing you.